Good morning, class. Welcome to Homeroom with Unc and Market Monk. Uh, morning, P. How's your week? Uh, it was it was good. I uh, found myself just operating from a really small list. Uh, I think the the midweek break, um, you know, kind of messed with overall momentum for the week. So you know, it was a little little bit uh, schizophrenic in some of the things. But um, you know, like coin and end phase they just reacted at the pivots. Um, a lot of stocks operating in kind of a pretty tight, tight box right now. Um, the pop and fade and puke and rally. That's kind of actually what that is to me where a stock like will break out of its range, but very briefly and then kind of finds equilibrium. That's pretty much what, uh, what happened Friday to NVIDIA and, and a lot of other ones. So, um, you can trade that. You just can't, uh, you can't set and forget it for options right now at all so definitely want to be mindful of that yeah i think inside the box is a good good um mutual ground comment because i feel the same way on a lot of things like that i'm uh, still trying to figure out the t1 volume um kind of sad the the two fridays i've been back full time that screens have been kind of quiet and um not really used to that usually we get a lot of action on friday uh, so i don't know if it's just the time of the year or if it's that new settlement rule um but I'm still still living off of um, the Unks market, just just those smalls that you just kind of got to wait for. Um, yeah, that and, and some familiar names in Bitcoin kind of made my week last week. Um, obviously, him and X is probably the biggest one, but you just kind of got to find that. I know you hate the word, but the stuff that's oversold or lagging currently, um, just more range up than down. I know it's kind of oversimplification of things but that's really what it is on, on charts that just have more range up than down uh, maybe get a little bit of news um, or you know relief in in their issues um, kind of been where I've been swimming at so um, not a bad week uh, overall but just slow volume um, and I'm with you definitely credit it to that that weird midweek day off yeah and I think yeah again I, I think I said this maybe the past couple of weeks, but the, the best trades in here have been where you, you just park some money in one of these smalls that we talk about and, uh, and you just wait. I mean, it's uh, they're they're hard to trade as it's happening uh, to me uh, because a lot of times, especially with the crypto stuff, you get this pre-market gap up and then a little bit of uncertainty on, you know, if you're going to get the follow through or kind of, retrace down and then move back up so you know so if you could just kind of sell on that initial initial pop it sort of takes a lot of the pressure off you know you can clear out half of it and and then go from there so um but that's yeah that's been a big part of what i've been doing and it isn't usually so it's definitely the conditions dictating that yeah but kind of creating 2.0 rules or just new stuff new new sayings along the way when people have their issues or troubles but Sizing definitely dictates how much you're going to get to keep. Um, and that's, yeah. I think that's on yeah. both the options and the share side. Um, you know, if you have a hundred shares, you're not going to be able to keep a lot. If you have a thousand shares, you'll be able to keep a couple hundred. And same with options. If you only have two, you're probably not keeping one. If you have three or four, you know, you might be able to keep a runner and just having that as part of your initial plan. Um, I guess realistic expectations well, almost is, is helped a lot for, me and I think a couple people in the group as well. Well, you know, if, if someone's sitting here trying to trade NVIDIA from 136 to 140 instead of just buying Oxy under $60, and we even better entry than that, um, I don't really know what they're trying to do uh, because you're, you're just, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself. And um, the thing about, you know, NVIDIA and some of those just, bumping up against their all-time highs or setting new, you know, setting new all-time highs all the time. Um, there is actually probably more room below than above, but you, but you don't know that you don't have anything. You don't have a target above to know when to short it really. And then below, we kind of know the spots and, and they're pretty far down. I mean, the, the 100 tests, we, I think we both think that's eventually going to happen on NVIDIA. Um, might, mess around with 120 for a while 
But um, yeah, I mean that that trade needs a lot of time before it's going to be good again, uh, and we saw that with the SAS stocks, and so that's kind of where chips are right now. You you can yeah you can trade them every day if you want to, but um, you're uh, you're really kind of playing with fire because you try to chase puts, it gets back to flat. You, you know you try to chase chase calls, it's down two percent and. Ten minutes. Um, just a, it's kind of a rough environment, as far as that goes, and that's where most of the Twitter traders operate. Uh, it's just trying to just squeeze the last drop out of every single one of these stocks that are up two two three hundred percent in a short span of time. Yeah, I, I have a lot of them trying to call the top. It seems like every day it's a bad Groundhog's Day for me over there. That. You know, today, yeah. today's the day we're going to go down and it just is like every single day. Um, and I, I, I mean, eventually they're going to be right, but you're going to be wrong, you know, 70, 80 times before you're right that one time. And it's a lot of that going on over there. Or like you're saying, just way late chasing that last, you know, 10% out of a move that's been two to 300% over the last year and a half. I'm seeing that with him a lot. Yes, um, yes, I agree. Like people acting like Hims is just getting started. Hims is the new CLSK. Yeah, yeah. New Carvana. Which, yep. Yeah, I mean that's kind of another saying that we always have is that you know Twitter kind of calls the top. That's when you need to start getting out of plays and um, yeah. <laughs> not necessarily the very top, but it's it's when we're going to definitely start the consolidation or getting a lot more sellers and buyers um, on a level. Um, our entry is usually a lot better, um, but they're uncomfortable. I, I don't know how else to say it. It's another thing that's came up over the last few weeks. Um, you're you're going to be in an uncomfortable situation when you buy the chart if you want the best entry. Um, and, and we've seen that over and over again. Give yourself a, give yourself time. Shares better than options. Um, yeah. you, you're usually going to be in a good spot on a lot of them. So I mean, even AMD, well, I... even AMD was that way. I mean, if you want to trade semis, um, uh, yeah, I, and I, I called out Intel and yep. to, to some disbelief in the room, but I guess it's like, well, I'm not here to pump Intel, but here it is. Like this is probably what's going to happen. So, and then, it, you know, it went up almost 2% the next day, which is a lot for them. Um, and the IV so low that if you're in options on that, that, um, that does really well, but yeah, yeah. As far as being uncomfortable goes, the, the enthusiasm I saw from people wanting MDB when it was over four hundred dollars does not match what it is when it's under two twenty. And under two twenty is where you really want it. It's um, because to to me, you're especially share side. Your worst case, you buy it. You know, it flushes below two twenty, which is it's done several days now. Um, it can break down and and give two hundred a look. It's probably not just going to fly right through two hundred without earnings or news or, you know, something like that. So, um, so there, there's kind of your, your range down, but all of that gives you time. The option positioning is all 250, 260 leaps to 300 plus. So, um, you know, the, the big picture looks, looks good on it. SAS, we know how it's been. Um, it's pretty much to me kind of churning through the worst of it. And, um, you know, cybersecurity is kind of the first to get off the mat. It was last time it's happening again. Um, and then all, you know, the database stocks kind of come after that. And, and that's where Snow and, and MDB come in. So, um, so yeah, it doesn't feel great. You might be waiting a while. You might go red on these positions a bit. But, uh, you know, seen this movie before. And uh, even if we don't get that full move up, like a lot of our stuff, you get half of what it did the first time. You're still, that's a pretty damn good trade because you're probably 50% share side. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you look at, you zoom out a little bit, check on the weekly. Last time it was at this level, it stayed here for 12, 13, 14 weeks. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and anticipate some consolidation. It's not never a bad thing um, in trades like that. I'm I'm kind of kind of get onto the market a little bit because you, you touched base on it just a little bit there. Um, we had the... the I guess the front loading for interest rates about a, I mean, it's almost a year ago, 10 months ago. Um, not all those people reset or left. 
Um, so we, we are getting higher lows, but I think we're slowly getting the people to come back in for the, you know, for that, that same cycle again of we want to be in before rate cuts. Um, that's going to hold up the market or, or bring a lot of these plays back to where they were, in my opinion. Um, because there are a lot of, I mean, you're, you touched base on it with a few names in the room, but there's a lot of companies that are really hurting right now. Um, and, and the rate relief will be enough to maybe get them back to float, if not profitable again. Um, and then yeah. any, any decisions they've made in the, God, we're two and a half years now of, of horrible rates, you know, any decisions they've made to clean up their balance sheet or, or to limit waste in their company, you know, that's still going to stick and hopefully help them out on the other side. So it's just trying to time that um, when everybody's all in on, you know, the bullish market from rate cuts, well, which I mean, open twice yeah, has gone from point. under $2 to over $4 that's on that same story. And so there's no reason to think it's not going to do that. It's not going to do that again. You don't know exactly how that's going to play out. Um, shares are way better, in, you know, in stocks like that. But if you need more than 50 to 100% in a trade, then I don't know what the hell you – I mean, just go to a casino. Uh, but if, you know, if you can't just, just park some money in there and, you know, and wait. And it's just – there are a lot of stocks like that. So, um, so yeah, I'm completely, completely with you there. The um, debt – the other major market thing I, I wanted to touch on to get your thoughts on was uh, really bad debt and, you know, debt restructuring being a catalyst. Uh, I'm seeing that you see headlines about, you know, company, well, we're not sure if we're going to be able to meet our obligations. Um, that can go a couple different ways. Obviously, you know, bankruptcy can come into it, but, uh, but, you know, other, other ways like they can kind of negotiate their way out of it, re rework their, their debt. Um, how do you feel about that, that kind of trade? Cause I see flow front loading, anticipating that in some distressed companies, I think. Well, all debt definitely isn't created equal. Um, that's yeah. for sure. We'll just use like red Robin since, um, we're both pretty into that. Most of their debt, I mean, they're, they're over what they own in debt, but most of it's property. Um, it's not like they took $9 billion in their building burger world and it's not open out there so they actually have yeah. the, the physical properties for what they have in debt they just don't own the properties they're paying a mortgage like the rest of us so it looks like a debt that's not bad debt to me it just might not be sustainable in these environments uh bad debt is is when you do take out loans for burger town and it's not running or it's a failed idea um or you have you have some asset that you're not using, like the Facebook building in New York. That would be another good good bad debt example. Yeah. Um, so like kind of dissecting that in each company and seeing, well, these guys are in debt, but that debt's really an asset. Those are the ones that are going to do the best. Um, you link that with anything proprietary, and uh, that's where the real, real winners are going to be. So, you know, Red Robin probably not the most proprietary company out there. Uh, you can get burgers at a lot of places. Um, yeah, but, but the, but again, their, their debt is, is property. So, um, we're open. I, I, I say that technology because open door, they do have something proprietary in their technology, just the, the way that they function. And, um, you know, that company is a little, a little better if they can come out of it. So, um, names in general though, like that, both those examples in a bad situation, I think they get bought by somebody, um, red Robin for their name open for their technology. Um, so, so it's not like they're going to go away, but could have a very bumpy road. See it with like uh, Lumen and Tupperware, um, where, yeah. you know, they might not be able to ever get it right. And someone's going to pick them up. Hawaiian airlines, another one, um, most of their debts in planes. Um, so they have the physical assets, but can't get the bottom line. Right. I mean, you can have. I can give anyone nine billion dollars, right, and they can fuck it up. <laughs> and and you you are seeing yeah, that yeah. in a lot of companies currently. So um, it's it's it uh, just it's just kind of figuring that out on an individual level. Um, I think that's where our sector coverage comes in best because we will talk about the blue chips and the poopy ones. Um, and yeah, you just kind of make a note um, of that when when they when they're offered at a price that you like. 
Um, yeah, I could sit here and talk all day about that though. Pete. From, um, from the yeah, casinos a, to the the casinos to the um, real estate to oil to you know miners, it's it's all the same in that regard. Well, it's a, it's a lesson I just took from from Hertz. Yeah, I mentioned Hertz last five, and I was like, I was like, oh, this TA looks bad, and I, you know, I'm like, I know it looks bad. It's you know the the options are kind of front loaded though, and so you know in those in those situations I don't you cannot do some massive sizing or something like that. But um, you know we talk about lotto sizing, and I just sort of I did that with that one real small, but you know still got something out of it, and uh, and I just expect to keep seeing that where there are some charts that are just a disaster. It it helps if it's a name people have heard of, I think. Sure. Um, you know, any hurt starts popping up on scanners, people know about it. People remember its history and, you know, whatever. Um, and you can get your 20, 30% out of it. So, so I, I do expect to see, you know, to see more of that, um, a kind of as part of the, the rate cut story too, just for, um, you know, companies trying to work their way out of a bad situation. Yeah, no, I would, I would advise anybody, whether you're in the room or not, to, to find, you know, three to five names that you like the company in general um, that are beat to shit and then do a little research on them, follow them a little bit. Um, they're going to give an opportunity and you'll see the news get way better before the chart does. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fun, Funco is the last example for me and I know it's a boring local stock and, and most people don't, you know, trade it, but um, you know, they sold a lot of property, moved their business down to Arizona. That was out a year before that chart turned around. And then they just kept refining their, their balance sheet. Every, every report, it got a little better. Um, I did mention that a few weeks ago. I love traded stuff that has earnings per share. It's like, you know, a, a penny or three pennies negative because it looks negative, but they're right on the brink of positive. Um, yeah. as opposed yeah. to something that's a dollar fifty per, per share you know, negative on the report. That's pretty hard to get off your balance sheet in a report or two. So look, looking for that flip, um, kind of understanding the fundamentals of the company. Um, I, I think you're always good grabbing four or five of those. Um, yeah. And, and you'll, I, I think that'll help you as a trader. You get into something like Tesla, you know, and you're like, oh, you know, this company looks great. They report good car numbers, but their balance sheet ain't that great because they invest in themselves. Or Palantir, another good example of, you know, keeping the money in house and kind of making what you look like have what you look like, look like shit because you're investing in yourself. Um, yeah, you, you, you'll kind of find a company that's cash rich. The last one I found like that was ASRT. I'm, I haven't got one like that in a while, but you'll, you'll find someone like these guys have $10 per share. Why are they trading at three fifty? Um, right. <laughs> and, and just kind of makes it a, an easier, I guess an easier angle and another tool in your weapon belt to, to find, um, swing trades yeah no absolutely uh want to get on some some boring stuff uh while i'm thinking about it the um you know one one big big story in the market right now is the strength of the dollar has been the dx you know the dx futures or dxy or whatever um you know that Moving from like 101 to 105, um, it, it's not it's not necessarily bearish, but it limits the follow through on moves. That's that's what I would say. Like you're you don't get a lot of your trend days up when the dollar is surging. So um, if you follow that, I would just you know look. If it breaks out at like 107 or something like that. Um, that could be a pretty sustained pullback in the market. So that's something I'd watch there just as a level and, uh, oil, um, oils to me still pretty good shape covering over $80. Um, I think we've talked about this, that 92 is kind of the, the target short term. I think that's where that oil might go. Um, we've got a lot of, a lot of stocks in good spots there. And, uh, Decent size pullback in copper to 450, but um, just kind of keep in mind where we're coming from. Coming from 350, and then my pivot below is four, so I don't know that we'll get to four, but we could get into like the 420s. 
Um, and I know people don't really trade copper futures, but but that's important to me because I look I look at how flow responds to um, to that. So I'm I'm still pretty bullish on on metals. Um, I just think uh, we're gonna make a higher low here. Is what I'm after. And uh, gold and silver, you know, a lot of miners still lagging. Silver's still sitting at thirty bucks. Um, a lot of complicated stuff happening with China and silver. But uh, yeah, I, that another test of thirty-two probably goes to thirty-five, thirty-six. And uh, I say that just because a lot of the flow on the smalls is is still positioned sixty, eighty, hundred percent. Um, out of the money. So, so I, I, you know, say, say all that to say, I think there's still a lot of safe trades here and uh, uranium. I'll close with that one is probably the most explosive of the group. I would look for that to turn around pretty soon. Natural gas, pretty quiet currently. Um, yeah. Yeah. Natural gas is, um, you know, tested three needs another three tests and, um, you know, could probably break out after that. Those uh, still prefer the combo stocks, the CHKs and Comstock Energies of the world over over the ETFs. Um, ETFs are good for some day trades, but you know they're just really a lot of leverage there and decay and things. So um, easier to just park some money in in some of the combos. Nice, nice. Yeah, that um the 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 natural gas sector is starting to interest me again just because uh it has the biggest geopolitical cards on the table currently in my opinion so um it's just i still don't understand how it's that cheap with how much we're exporting um yeah i mean it's uh a lot of price suppression going on so yeah they're they're, they're holding it down it's just that if it does if it does break out I mean, it can go to six bucks pretty fast. So yeah, we've seen that before, and you just kind of want to already be, already have a piece of that move when it happens. Yeah, and I'm and um last last little bit there. I'm starting to see a lot of articles written about nuclear power. Yes, it, 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 they're just making the rounds. Um, I might be a little hypersensitive because we talk about it so much, but. Um, yeah, I've seen three or four last week. I was like, they're starting to talk about nuclear energy as a viable option. There, um, I mean, if, yeah, if, um, yeah, not to be like conspiracy theorists, but it, it does seem very kind of program this new cycle of, uh, well, you know, nuclear waste, it's not as bad as you guys think. Look, it only takes up this little, yeah. this little spot in this mountain. And, you know, a solar farm uses this much land the nuclear plant uses this much and they run so much cleaner now so the um pu- you know getting the public sentiment on it um you can see the wheels turning there so definitely yeah the one the angle on this one i read p was um so i forget the product but like we export the manufacturing to germany and they still burn coal or whatever to you know they basically use dirty manufacturing tactics to to make stuff so we're just exporting the emissions and co2 damage right so yeah. we're, we're better yeah. off opening nuclear and doing it here clean that was the angle that they were taking. exactly yeah <laughs> that's yeah. the angle they were taking so i thought that was just an interesting that it's it's the fud for lack of better terms is coming out in that sector yeah uh it's linked to ai is important too to me the that you know because that's where a lot of power needs come from. It's, you know, you just flip the switch, it's on 24-7 and, you know, can power those data centers and all that. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's a big trade for us going forward. To me. Um, a little bit off of what we do here, but I think we've got a minute or two. And I just want to get your opinion because um, I'm not going to final five it in the next section. Um, but wh- where are you at with Tesla right now? Just curious on your thoughts. We got around. I, um, we got around that that contract thing with Musk. Um, yeah. Where, where's yeah. That? So, uh, to me, it's it's pretty bullish for it to hover. Yes. Between our two pivots, 
um, that's kind of the, the main thing that, um, you know, you just, uh, you want to keep the 200 calls relevant and that needs to be above 180 for that to really be realistic. So, um, so yeah, I, I think, um, I think it's going to break out to the upside. Uh, okay. I would be, I'm pretty bullish on it. Um, I just, it's going to be hard to get 120s again. I, you know, I don't think. Oh, really sure. Get that. sure. Um, and then even, even 160 is a bit of a stretch unless they just get not even just one news, news event, but a string of, of bad news. Uh, that it, you know, it can, it can start to cascade down a bit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think if you want Tesla long term, and you didn't buy any down, at, you know, down at one forty, or you cleared it all out, you know, on that big pop, which is understandable. Um, I think you can start get started again if you just have time on your side. Okay, yeah, I think so. I think we see it similarly. I'm agreeing with yeah. the, fl- the floor's kind of lifted, but the the upward move isn't really imminent or easy to time. So it's getting yeah. a start, getting a starter here probably not a bad idea. Um, I also think you can still get those one low one seventies, upper one sixties, uncomfortable buys. Um, here. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a stock built to shake out weekly options because people trade so many of them still. So, um, yes, yes, that's where you know if you have shares, you don't really care that much about that. If you're scalping options to buy shares, um, I think that's a reasonable thing to do. If you're buying options for the multi bagger you're in the wrong stock so uh, sure yeah that's my take there sure um but good good time long-term dcas kind of seeing that now on the weekly and the daily chart um after some consolidation here um yeah too many people want to call that 205 right now and i was like well i don't know if it's 205 but it's probably a good buy um that's how how i'm seeing it i just i didn't know if what was happening on your end um because I'm assuming you're going to start seeing like the 220s, 250s, um, when we do yeah. get out, do yeah. get out of this. Summer, and I, so. I, uh, I keep an eye on it. Um, oh, and sure. there's been a couple times I've posted flow like that. So yeah, I definitely, definitely will post that as I see it. Perfect, perfect. And let's move on to the big boy while we're here. Um, did pretty good on the top last week. Um, I think it was 550 was the number. We were 49 and 48. The bottom though, man, the bottom didn't come around at all. Uh, we were no. down at we were down at thirty four. We got to forty two. Um, let's say resilient this week. I don't know how else to put it. Kind of, but we kind of started. Um, we finished where we started, but but kind of a resilient chart to be honest. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I'm not to happen for the, our our downside numbers to hit. Um, is a really rough pre-market, right? And then, you know, usually like it'll it'll recover and then retest that low, and then maybe break down below it a little more. Um, and we're just not we're just not seeing that. The, the weeks are starting off so good that all the downside is just you know it's just retracing what already happened. So um, so yeah, it's it's tough to get that. I you know I've said that. Um, the hardest part about reading this remains the fact that all the open interest is locked up in these puts, a lot of which are going to be worthless. So you just got to kind of just sit, you're just sifting through piles and piles of contracts, trying to find one that they're actually trying to do something with. So um, it's still December um, 460 that they're still trying to keep around. Um, I don't know what that, that means, uh, you know, to me, given the expiration, uh, I, you know, I don't think that's looking for it to go to 460, but possibly under 520, and then we kind of go from there. But I think you just got to keep raising the floor. Um, the market correction is not going to take us 100 points down, probably, anytime soon. No, 520s even is a stretch from here. Uh, would yeah, feel, it feel, is. would yeah. feel like death, but there's a pretty good level on um, shorter time frames there. Um, yeah, I would, I, I would love that if that happened. It would make <laughs> things so much easier. Yeah. No, I agree. This is getting um, the pressure is building, so to speak, 
um, on this chart. I mean, it's just a constant up move um, with very lim limited downside in sight. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, at this point, if we're not walking it up, so to, so to speak, we're, we're kind of going against the grain, probably being a little biased. Um, so I'm going to go with that. I, I already wrote mine down. I have 552.52 and then 538.69. Shout out, Goose. Um, just the range we've been living in, kind of sideways, but with the top rising. And um, I just see that continuing this week. Really no reason to stop it, to be honest. Um, yeah, no, I, I think so. Um, so I'm going to go to like the middle of this, this week. I'm going to say 549.04. And five thirty eight oh five. So we're similar on the bottom. Yeah. Eight oh five, um, which is kind of just playing the natural rhythm of the chart. And then the top of you're a little tighter than me. Why, P? Just curious on you know, that five fifty a big number for you on your side or? Um. Uh, yeah, bid side it is. So I just I think they might not. I think they might slap it down pretty hard when it approaches that. Uh, might wick over it, but um, sure, sure. I think the you know the body of a candle will probably be around my spot. We'll see, yeah, see. our body this week was two dollars, so that that tightening yeah, range yeah. definitely stands out. Um, yeah. Usually, I mean, we had a good week the week before. Usually, you get two or three of those candles, maybe even a little, a little underside. Which, which, yeah, I'm looking for that. Um, well, I guess you kind of answered. I was going to ask you if we if we close above 550 this week but you're you never you didn't hit 550 so you, you still think right, a yeah, week, or, so. week or two of, of left before that's a that's in the cards um yeah i think pretty bullish about the next round of earnings uh but earnings are i don't know are these i guess this is the end or just the beginning because fedex goes this week i think that's that's the beginning for me that would be q beginning yeah yeah uh, so, you know, a couple, quiet couple weeks of earnings kind of churning back up. Um, FedEx used to be a pretty big barometer for the market. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know, with the dominance of chips, it's not really as much anymore. But uh, but definitely we'll be watching that. Um, yeah, real quick on SPY, just to kind of clown something I saw on Twitter. Um, if you post a, a monthly chart for the last 100 years and you're trying to make a bearish statement about SPX, I don't really – I don't really think that works very well <laughs> because I mean the um, the the higher you go on the time frame, you know, the more it's just obvious, it's just strength over time. Yeah. You know, it's like this, this is here's you know United States dominance of the world, you know, right here. So um, you know, getting a monthly correction that's you know really stands out. Um, there's going to be like maybe two in a lifetime for people. <laughs> so it's a, uh, you know, it's to be the, the shot, go shot caller on that. I just don't think that that, um, that that works. And, um, and then just, you know, final thought on that. The one thing, you know, Russ Gerber's kind of, uh, you know, he's kind of, kind of a clown to me, but there's one thing he said that is definitely true um, that, there's no other game in town. Like you invest in America. Sure. That's, you know, and, and so it even, even though, you know, I like a lot of the South American stuff. I mean, look how, look at the kind of the, it's a, it's a niche, right? It's, it's very specific. It's a nickel iron producer. It's an oil stock, you know, here and there, but um, just, uh, yeah, it's just the dominance of the, of U S stocks. Um, I think it's always, always worth, reminding yourself of that when you start looking for opportunities i see people looking at europe and japan and wanting to you know don't get too cute with it um you know the strength is still in the u.s stock market and that's where i think most of your attention should go fuck i tell you to trade options before telling you to trade foreign markets i mean yeah, that's just yeah, exactly the way right. it, um yeah. and, and and as as far as spy goes i mean it just in general, it's. I mean, I, I say it all the time. It's the way it's set up and built. It's built to go up. They get to rotate names out. Like they get to take weak names out of this thing. It's not like an oil yeah, ETF yeah. where you're just stuck with all the oil companies for the rest of your life. Um, it it's it's 
it's, it's meant, a, you know, it's meant to beat the, the market or, or give you a stable slide up and beat inflation. I guess that's really what it's for to set it and forget the, it to stay ahead of um, inflation. Go ahead, sorry. It's the, it's the pro team that can, with you know, with all the money, no salary cap issues, you just go get the players you want. You get rid of the ones you don't want, and so, so yeah. I mean, that rotation of constantly bringing stocks in, you know, kicking them out. The stability of the sector exposure for SPY helps them a lot too. Yes, you know, more more so than Nasdaq. So, um, so yeah, and, and I feel the same. I mean, just when people want to look at the small cap ETFs as it, oh, it's lagging. Sure, sure. It, uh, yeah, it, it's always been lagging. It's gonna, it can stay lagging, and you're just better off with, you know, just uh, stronger companies that are profitable. Um, there's always going to be a lot of a lot of duds in, the, in IWM. So I don't know what people are doing, staying in there, overthinking it to me. Yeah, no, I mean, if you want more than a safety place, you just trade the individual names. Um, yeah, in fact, like the day after I told the guy, I'm like, I'd rather just buy L. It went up nine percent the next day. Exactly. So. Yeah, because you're not going to get that in in the even the best of the ETFs. You're just not going to get yeah. that. Or or index funds. You're just not getting yeah. that. Perfect. Uh, you ready to get to work, Pete? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I'll grab a coffee. All right, like and subscribe for more. Link somewhere. Retweet. <laughs>